Hello hey guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you what we're doing with our living wall here at the back. So um, this was the first living wall that I built and I made some mistakes. The next living wall I did at the side of the house has come out much better. Also the environment down the other side of the house gets a little less sun. Um, it's a little bit more humid, less wind. So the environment's better, but also as well I just think the way that I set up the wall is better too. So on the other side there, I've got felt. I've got the plants in felt pockets and the felt gets soaked. And uh, as it dries, it kind of adds to the humidity. So I'm going to do a similar thing here. The problem is I do have some plants that are really well established, like this Biete, the Regali here, the Orlando, I've got a Vichy up there. I don't want to remove those. I don't want to disturb them as much as possible. Um, so what I'm doing at the moment is clearing away uh, there's a lot of plants on here that have died, so I'm clearing those away. And the plants that are doing well, I'm kind of keeping uh, down here. So they're in pots down there. Uh, so the same pots that are on, on the wall, I'm just taking them off. Some roots, like uh, here. So some of the roots from some of these nests that I've got some of the philodendrons in had grown out and had grown into some of the pots. So some of those roots are now going to be exposed, but I have an idea of what I'll do with those once I get the felt and everything back on. Um... I will put some pots there, put some soil in and put those roots back into a pot. Um, so I found a lot of areas on this wall that were dry. Um, so the thing with these pots is the soil over time kind of washes out the holes in the bottom. So a lot of them ended up with not very much medium inside. And the other problem I found is the ones that I put arid mix in so the, the smaller particles had washed away and what you're left inside with is just the larger chunks and um, the roots are just growing in that. Excuse me, it's a little bit hot and sweaty out here today. Um, so <clears throat> anyway, what we are going to do basically is remove everything that we can from the wall. Then I'm going to leave the, the cage and everything that's there <clears throat> and we're going to hang a black felt over it. Now that'll do a couple of things. One... It will hold moisture. It'll give something for the roots of some of the other plants to get onto. So you see, we've got a lot of aerial roots coming from things, but there's nothing for them to grip to. So the, uh, the felt will do that. It'll uh, increase the humidity. It'll also look better because you're going to have a black background, which will make the plants stand out. So overall, it's just going to be a better setup. Um, and then along the top, we'll have our soaker hose, and that will come on a couple of times a day and just kind of soak the felt and that will add to the humidity. It won't water the plants, but it will add to the humidity that's there. And some of the plants that have got roots growing into the felt will get watered. I'm still gonna have to manually water this one, not like the one at the side where everything's in felt pockets and it just soaks through. Um, but I don't wanna go to the job of removing all of these big philodendrons that are already established here to do that. So I'm gonna crack on with removing all this stuff. So we've got a lot of kind of scrappy plants up there that are not doing so well because they're dried out. Actually, when I was getting these pots off, I found very, very dry soil, almost like dust um, on some of them. Um, so we'll continue removing, get rid of what's dead, freshen it up, line it with the felt, and then go uh, buy some new plants uh, to fill up some of the gaps and, and put some of the old stuff back. So the lower half of the wall has been done, as in removing everything that was no good anymore. All of the good stuff that's uh, still surviving, the, we'll just put the pots down here on the floor. We'll rearrange those later. I found this anthurium growing there with a new leaf that was just hidden away, buried behind a bunch of dead fer ferns. So um, glad that we found that. And uh, yeah, so basically I've left the stuff that was doing well. So we've got some ferns that are growing inside of other pots that just self-propagated themselves. So anything that kind of looked decent um we've left in place uh the BSA now you can see how the how this nest system works i call it a nest that i kind of build for them so it's out of a fishing net and we fill it then with the uh, aroid mix and put it in there hang it on there the roots are able to grow out it's able to get air to the roots but it also retains moisture and uh well the results are speaking for themselves look at this BSA how beautiful that is um it got a little bit scorched on the end. Sometimes in the summer, it does get a little hot here. And these were dangling down and they were touching the edge of this. And this got hot and it scorched the ends. 
Um, we've got our Glorious here, which has been climbing up. I tried to get to go up this pole, but it's decided to go off the pole. Now it's over here. So part of this process, I'm going to add another pole um, behind it to give it support now for where it's going. This existing pole here can probably be removed. I don't think it's attached to it at all. So I'll, I'll, I'll relocate this pole to there so that uh, it has something else to continue climbing on because this um, Glorious is really doing nicely here. Um, now at the bottom in the pot there, I've put a, uh, a variegated burly marks, which will grow up where the glorious was, which will help to, uh, just kind of cover up this, uh, now bare, um, post because, uh, there used to be leaves there. You can see the nodes there, but they've, they've gone over time. So, uh, we'll fill up that space now with this burly marks. Hopefully we'll grow bushy and fill up that gap there. Uh, Regale is doing... Okay, so I'm not going to relocate it. It's happy where it is. It's got roots starting to come out of the uh, nest that it's in. So I'm not going to move this at all. It's just given us this leaf a uh, few weeks ago. I found that with the regales, I, I rarely get more than one leaf at a time. Uh, um, <coughs> it's like it kills off the old leaf before making a new, a new one. I don't know whether it's the environment or that's the nature of regales. I'm not sure. Um... You can see here also our Monstera Deli Show, so it's starting to latch onto the wall and climb up. I'm not going to give this a pole. I'm just going to let it climb up the wall. It seems to be happy doing that. Um, we just got a new leaf out of this. So we actually have two Monsteras here. There's another one there, which is on a pole, but it's starting to kind of come off the pole. It wants to come over this area. So uh, we'll probably need to add some support for this one and train it over to the wall. So we'll have both of them growing up the wall here. Uh, so clearing up this living wall has really given us a chance to see what's going on back there um, and, and see which plants are doing well and which ones are not and clear away the old stuff. See, we've got this Choco Empress here, which uh, was kind of hidden away behind everything. It's got a new leaf coming out. Um, so maybe as well now we're clearing it up. Things like that will be more visible. And when we put the new plants in around it... Um, we can, we can position plants that are going to make the, the show pieces stand out. Um, you know, basically on the living wall like this, we've got our show pieces, which will probably be, you know, the Vichii, this Orlando here, the Biete, the Glorious, the Regali. And we want to make those stand out. So the plants that go around them should just be kind of filler plants. And you can see this area up here has really just become a mess. Um, so we, we need to get up there, clear up this as well, up at the top. The very top of this wall is difficult because it gets hit by a lot of midday sun. Nothing seems to like surviving up there. Um, although the Pariso Verde seems to be having a splendid time up there. The Mexicanum's wilting a little bit. And I actually found that the Mexicanum has detached itself from its pot. So it was, uh, yeah, <clears throat> it was in this pot here. But basically, I don't know, the stems rotted, but the rest of the plants survived. So... It's living off of its aerial roots right now. It's not even rooted into a pot. <clears throat> so that might be also why it's not looking so healthy because uh, it's maybe it's having trouble getting, uh, getting water up because it's kind of lost its main stem. Um, so we'll fix that while we're doing the wall. We'll, we'll probably cut nearest to the uh, kind of lowest um, good aerial roots, move the pot up, repot it there. I need to be careful when I start working up there because we do have uh, Vichii coming out. I don't want to damage that leaf. Um, Vichii is one of my favorite plants and uh, they are quite greedy with leaves. And so I don't want to damage that one. I want a nice perfect leaf coming out of there. So we need to be careful when we're working up at that part because the new anthurium leaves are very, very delicate. Uh, once we're done with this area, we've still got this one to do. Um, also, uh, so tidy up a little bit this as well, but, uh, this is the main part that I want to work on getting done. So cleared up the bottom and now I need to get the ladders. We'll clear up the upper part and then we can start hanging the felt. Um, it's going to be a bit of a jigsaw puzzle to fit it around all of the existing stuff. And, uh, and then we can start putting back on what we took off, see what space we have left, go out to the plant shop, buy some new plants to fill it up. Almost there now. 
with removing all of the old stuff. Set up a corner to do. And uh, then we'll get the, uh, the felt fabric and start lining the wall. Which shouldn't take too long to do. We're just gonna drop it down, cut it to length, uh, attach it at the top, like hook it over the top and then attach it with some uh, uh, wire, tie wire. So it just hangs. And then anyway, the pots are gonna hold it into place. We'll possibly tie it in a couple other places. And uh, yeah, the trickiest part is gonna be we need to kind of cut it and match it around these uh, plants that are already here. Um, but that shouldn't be too bad to do. I think it's possible. Um, so I'm gonna take a break now, actually go and do some of my real job. Uh, and then I'll come back to this later. Anyway, it's starting to warm up. And I'll do this again maybe uh, this evening. We'll carry on, get the rest of that stuff down from up there. Well, when I got up there to the Vichy, uh, I could see that some insect had been chomping on the leaf, the new one coming out. So it is damaged, um, which is unfortunate. I also found as well that the, the nest it's in, maybe it's starting to outgrow it a little bit. Could do with some more... Um, uh, growth medium so i'll probably transfer it to a slightly larger nest also as well it's got a little bit of sunburn on it so uh i'll probably relocate it on the wall as well somewhere a little bit more shady where it might be a little happier but uh it needs some rehabilitation i think before we put it back up okay so the great thing about these nests is that you don't have to disturb the plant so basically i just got a bigger um mesh bag and filled it and Put the existing one inside of there so this hasn't been disturbed at all it hasn't been taken out and then the roots have been disturbed i just put the old bag into the new bag and it'll just keep on growing in there now i'll find a new place for this on the wall where it's got a little bit more shade so we've got a lot of aerial roots coming down you can see for example this one here coming down from i think we've got pariso verde mexicanums up there what I'm gonna do with these is tuck them behind the mesh. So when we put the felt on the front of here, they're gonna be protected and they're gonna be in a kind of more humid, damp environment again, because the felt will be damp. Um, and it, so that's where I'm gonna try and root all of these. Gotta be kind of careful with them. They are brittle, they can snap easily. So just carefully as best as we can, we root them down the back of the mesh rather than at the front. So here's what I mean by how dry some of them are. Now, the funny thing is, is these two pots were right next to each other. And this one's wet, and this one's very, very dry. So no wonder this alocasia black velvet is not doing so well in here. Dried out, you see the leaves there. Um, so that is one of the issues I've got with this, with this wall. I'm not sure why one pot would be so wet and the other one just below it isn't. The water's supposed to drain out the bottom of one and into the other, so it kind of cascades down, but... Anyway, um, I think we can save this plant now. Um, we'll just re repot it into, actually I'm gonna put this one into the ground somewhere rather than putting it back on the wall. But that's the kind of thing I'm coming across. And it's really bizarre that one pot next to it, you know, it's not that I'm not watering them because this one's wet and this was right next to it and this one's dry. So here's our progress now. It's got a bit sunny, so I put the canopy out and you can see that this canopy provides some shade lower down, but even you know, high up on the wall there, those plants are really getting hit by some bright sun. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm thinking that possibly at the top there, I'm gonna put a little canopy above the wall to provide some shade to the plants that are there on the very top. But uh, we've basically removed all the pots now that need taking off. I've kept all the plants that were good. Uh, the hose pipe that's still there, the soaker hose, I need to remove that. Um, but it's really quite warm out there now, so I'll do that uh, early tomorrow morning. And uh, once we've got that soaker hose removed, we'll line it with the black felt and then put the new irrigation along the top. So I'm thinking I'm just going to have um, the drippers and the misters running along the top. And they're just going to soak the fabric. And also, uh, um, also they will <clears throat> wet some of the pots as well, and it's just going to run down the wall. And hopefully the plants will find uh, an attachment there. So we've got some of the uh, fabric up already. It's a little tricky to do because we've got plants already there in place. So fitting the fabric around the plants that are already there 
a bit of a jigsaw puzzle, but uh, we're getting there. There's going to be some gaps, but uh, once the plants all grow out and we put new pots and everything in here, you're not going to really see them. But uh, it has the desired effect, and you'll notice that the the black background really makes the the green foliage of the plant stand out a lot more than what it did against the grey concrete wall. Um, so we've got one more strip to go after this one. I think this middle one's the most complicated. And uh, then we've got all those up. And then it will also uh, help with the plant health, I think, hopefully. Um, add to the humidity and stuff in the area. When I was out here this evening, found this little fella. Come to sit on our Delishosa. There must be another one around somewhere because a moment ago they were singing to each other. Anyway, I'll get on then with uh, the wall, which is coming together quite nicely. So we've still got the other strip to put up the other side there, but you can see now the difference between the black background and the grey background. The black really just makes plants stand out. So it's really starting to come together now and look a lot more lushy, uh, especially as we got rid of all the old plants as well. So we're done with all the fabric now. I uh, finished it off this morning as it's uh, not too hot yet. And uh, next we're going to be putting in the drip irrigation. So I salvaged from a previous project some of our Gardena um, drippers here. And uh, these are going to run along the top. So first we have a uh, thing that gets the pressure down to the correct um, pressure that we need. So this is going to be fixed up there where I've got the hose that came in for the previous irrigation system. We'll put this there. And then attached to that, we have these drippers. And we're going to run those along the top. And this is going to be pointing down. So we'll just get uh, water dripping down the wall um, every time this is on. And um, then we'll also probably put a couple of um, misters on there as well. It's kind of pointing downwards a little bit just to also give some more water to the wall. So I'm going to start getting this installed now before it gets too hot. So I got all of the irrigation up there. Rather than drippers, we put the misters on and angled them back a little bit. So. You can see now it's wetting the cloth, but also there's kind of a mist coming off of it as well. So it's also getting some humidity around the plants and it will drip down. You can see it's running down the, the leaves, the roots, and it will just find its own path down the wall. And hopefully everything will get some water. Um, I think I'll still have to water it manually with a hose a couple of times a week, but at least uh, twice a day we can turn this on for five, 10 minutes and it will help to keep the plants healthier here, just like the ones on the wall on the other side of the house. So uh, what we've got to do now is go um, do the fun part, which is the plant shopping and choose which new plants you want to have to fill in all these spaces here. So here's the finished product. Finally, it's uh, taken us a few days uh, to get this far. <clears throat> Not working yet. all day every day. It's been hot. Um, <clears throat> we had a big thunderstorm last night, so I was out here working in the rain. Um, but there it is, uh, filled up with plants again. Um, looking really good, and uh, hopefully the, the new irrigation system and uh, felt layer will keep the plants happy. Um, so I'm going to do this area next in a similar way. Needs tidying up a bit, but uh, this is looking good. Now, with the living walls, whenever they're newly planted, there's always going to be gaps and holes. Um, takes a few months for it to kind of fill in and for the plants to orientate their leaves to the sun and get happy in their new environment. But that's basically it. Um, we'll keep an eye on it over the coming weeks. So down at the bottom here, um, I extended the felt all the way down. And in the um, pots that we got down here, I've put in some Syngoniums, some Monstera adansonii. Those can climb up and they'll fill up the bottom area there. Um, we got this Monstera. Not really sure the exact type. It's not a 
Adam Sony eye and it's not a blind Chetty eye. Um, don't remember what they said it was, but it looked quite nice, so I got that as well. Um, we've repotted the big bill and cerium that's in this new pot here. Um, uh, I had a little bit of root rot. Uh, it, previously, it had been over in that corner there, and it's quite damp, doesn't get a lot of sun. So we put that there. We brought some uh, alocasias, which can be grown, or um, I think they're colocasias, that can be grown as aquatic plants. So these are black magics. Um, we've got those in, in here now growing as aquatics. I want to get some more. Um, I really, really want to get an alocasia um, mojito and have that growing there. Um, so uh, we propped up this. This was uh, starting to get heavy. I put two new posts in so we just keep on kind of adding to the support that this that this has over time because it's growing really huge um and then down the other side of the house here um we're going to be doing some work here i'm going to be adding in more stepping stones to make it a more complete path down the side here we've got a new leaf coming out on our Ansirium radicans as well as what looks like a spadex. Um, uh, we added in a new uh, anthurium here, that's this one. Um, so this area here is really good for our anthuriums, they really seem to like it down the side here in this area, so putting more in. This one I got cheap because it wasn't in good condition, um, but I'm hoping that it can come back to life down the side here. Uh, so we have the air conditioning here, which uh, Makes it quite warm down the side here. So it's really quite warm and humid. Um, and then it's our other living wall, which kind of inspired what we've just done on the rear one. So this one, uh, everything is planted in felt pockets. So uh, I couldn't take off everything off the rear wall. Uh, it would already kind of start growing there. So they're not in felt pockets like this one, but at least they have the felt backing now and the plants will be able to grow the roots into the felt. So you can see what's happened to this one here. The roots start growing into this felt, they grip onto it. So uh, yeah, they're just happy growing like that. You can see this wall's really lush. On the side here, we've got a new leaf coming out on this anthurium. Again, the anthurium's really like this side of the house. It gets morning sun, evening sun, and during the afternoon, it's kind of cool. Um, and uh, humid down there. Okay, so that is our rebuild of our living wall here at the back of the house. And I think it's gone really well. I hope this inspires you to do some uh, work in your garden. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.